so we have a scenario basically that uh, we've had a number of evacuees come down from Pem Pemberton and Lil Watt Nation because of Mount Baker volcano activity. Um, so basically both of those communities have been completely evacuated. Um, they've come down to our center. Um, so I'll take you on a little tour of the facility. So you'll be coming through the main entrance here at Brennan Park. And our first stop would be um, this information area here. Um, so we have Sarah who's uh, doing our meet and greet. Um, she'd be welcoming you. She'd be explaining what kind of services we provide here at the reception center. You'd be getting a number here from Sarah. She'd be giving you uh, a ticket number. And we'd keep yeah, one half just number. to kind of keep track of how many people have come through. And you'd be coming in here over to the waiting area. And you have a seat over at the waiting area. Um, and, you know, we'd expand this depending on how many people were coming in. Um, this whole facility actually is flexible the way we would take over it depending on the size of the emergency We may be taking over different rooms for different types of functions um, And once your number was called on your ticket, you'd be directed up to one of these registration referral desks um, And the people over here, uh, so Pete and his team, they would actually be um, registering the information for, for you and your family or if you were an individual, um, taking down your personal details, your contact information, where you come from, making sure you were eligible for the services as well um, because we want to make sure people are actually coming from the affected areas so we can prioritize the resources. Um, and then they would also be giving you different vouchers. Um, So basically they'd be filling out the um, personal information on a registration card like this. They'd be giving you a number of vouchers depending what services you needed, whether it was for accommodation or food or clothing or toiletries. Um, they'd be giving you one voucher for each of those services. So it's quite a heavy uh, paperwork system. It can take a little while to sit down and go through this. Um, you know, and we, we kind of treat it as a space for people to decompress a little bit. You know, sometimes these are the first people that you have a chance to talk to after being evacuated. So kind of sit down, um, have a minute, kind of tell your story, and then um, start to figure out what you're going to do in the next few days. So we offer, initially, um, all of those services are provided by the province for 72 hours from when the emergency event first starts. Um, so often what happens, like in the wildfires uh, last year um, during the summer in 2018, 2017, that period of time gets extended from that initial three days um, to, in some cases, weeks. It just depends on the situation and what kind of resources the province has to, to provide to people. Um, and so once you got registered here, um, you would be uh, directed to one of the other uh, service areas. So if you had opted for accommodation, if we didn't have room in a hotel um, or in a motel or something for you or a campground, we'd be providing you with group lodging. Um, normally this wouldn't be co-located with where you're registering people, but we wanted to give people an idea of what it looks like. Um, so over here, um, this is sort of what uh, typical group lodging might look like. So you'd have a cot set up with the light and um, normally we put like some toilet, toiletries and hygiene kits out for people. Um, and uh, yeah, here in Brennan Park, um, we have the shower facilities, obviously with the pool, so that's what you would be using if you were um, accommodating group lodging here. Same up in Totem Hall, we set up a similar thing up there with some education. Um, over on the stage, this is actually where um, our, our sort of staff area is. So this is where all the documentation, um, the finance, the paperwork, this is where it's all going. This is all the behind the scenes stuff happening. We're offering people soup and sandwich as they come through. Um, and just having a kind of place where they can actually sit and, uh, you know, have a little break and sort of talk with each other, um, get information. Um, and then over on the far corner here, we've actually got some uh, emergency preparedness information. Um, and we also, we have some, some guests here with the Squamish Hospice Society. Um, they're actually selling emergency kits for us today, um, which is great. So $25 from every one of their emergency um, kits that they sell actually goes to the Hospice Society fundraiser. Um, so it's kind of a nice little added bonus as well as people are passing through. Because, you know, a lot of people, they don't necessarily have the emergency kits at home. and. Um, if something happens quickly, like it's great to already have that prepared and ready to go, to be able to bring that with you. So at least for those first few days, you know, just in case, like if the government was, uh, you know, if it was a major emergency, they weren't able to offer those services, you at least have some things with you for those initial hours. Yeah. We also have our pet registration area. So, um, you know, as I mentioned before, we try to provide the, the basic resources for people when they first are evacuated. Um, 
<laughs> pets is something, you know, we want to encourage people as much as possible when they're considering what their family's needs are in an emergency. They also are considering their pets, so having a proper carrying case, having extra food set aside for them, thinking about where they would go, what they would do with their pet if they were evacuated in an emergency. Um, because, you know, there isn't always necessarily a space for them in the place they're going. So they have to kind of think that through a little bit. Today we've actually set up a pet registration area. It wouldn't, again, it wouldn't normally be co-located in the same facility just because of people's allergies, sometimes people are scared of dogs or cats. Um, so we'd have it set up probably somewhere either outside if the weather was good or in a, another, um, another building somewhere. Um, so people would be bringing their animals here, they'd be registering them. Um, if they were staying in group lodging or in a hotel where they weren't able to actually have their pet there, um, then they would actually be, uh, if, if we were providing that service, they could check their pet in um, and we'd be uh, taking care of them for them. What if someone seeing this and would like to volunteer under that kind of circumstance? What's the process for them? Um, there's a few different ways. They can get involved with one of our um, our emergency volunteer groups. So we use the Red. We work really closely with the Red Cross um, to do a lot of our registration and referrals um, and to respond to some of our smaller scale emergencies. They would also come in and backstop us in a larger emergency. Um, so they can either get in touch directly with the Red Cross through the Red Cross website. I think it's redcross.ca. Um, and there's a volunteer registration, volunteer information um, section on the website. Um, they can also contact me at the Squamish Emergency Program with the District of Squamish, um, and I can certainly um, make some recommendations for them and sort of talk to people about how they can get involved and volunteer with us. So we're always looking for volunteers. Um, you know, today I think we had 12 volunteers show up from different parts of the communities, which is fantastic, but that's a small team. So, you know, the more people we get on board to help in the situation, the better.